So today is July 13th, which is probably not a big deal to most of you, unless you happen to live in Montenegro, in which today is Statehood Day. But if, like me, you're an unabashed aficionado of all things sci-fi, then today is actually kind of a big deal. On this day, 78 years ago, in Yorkshire, England, Patrick Stewart was born. Mm. That's more like it. He's been one of the driving forces in cinematic and television sci-fi for decades and shows no sign of slowing down. So happy birthday, other more famous Patrick. And in honor of this momentous occasion, we're having ribs. Yeah! Well, I'll have to disappoint you all on the ribs, but what I will be serving up are some delectable tidbits of trivia. So sit back, relax, and enjoy these facts about Patrick Stewart you probably didn't know. Make it so. Patrick Stewart grew up relatively poor and is a survivor of a domestically abusive household. His father had been a career soldier who experienced intense combat conditions during World War II, but in addition to becoming accustomed to being in a position of authority and having his orders obeyed, he also suffered from some serious PTSD. Afterwards, the elder Mr. Stewart had trouble readjusting to civilian life, especially in the menial jobs he was forced to take in an economically depressed post-war Britain, and this did not lend itself to a happy household. After having witnessed his father abuse his family for years, Patrick Stewart would later work with Amnesty International to bring awareness to the problem of domestic violence. Stewart was not an enthusiastic student in school, except when it came to drama. He left school at 15 and soon took a job as a reporter for the local newspaper while continuing to participate in local theater groups and productions. However, it turned out that he was actually spending all of his time in the theater, including the time that he was supposed to be working. So if he was devoting all of his attention to acting, how did he find the time to write the articles for his newspaper? Simple. He made them all up. Turns out that this may actually be one corroborated case of fake news. The first duty of every Starfleet officer is to the truth, whether it's scientific truth, or historical truth, or personal truth. That's right, he was appointed an officer in the Order of the British Empire in 2001, and was knighted as a Knight Bachelor by Queen Elizabeth II herself in 2010 for his services to acting. Of course, it's hardly the first time we've seen him in the trappings of a knight. He played medieval Knight King Leandegras in 1981's Excalibur, Sir Simon de Canterville in The Canterville Ghost, King Richard I in Robin Hood Men in Tights, and Roman Knight Sejanus in the 1976 miniseries I, Claudius. Sir Patrick has had a huge variety of roles throughout his career, spanning the entire spectrum of human personality. He's mostly remembered for his heroic roles, but he's played his fair share of villains as well, and perhaps none were more deliciously awful than Gaius Elius Sejanus, the corrupt and ruthless enforcer of Emperor Tiberius in the classic BBC miniseries I, Claudius. His screen time was relatively short, but he stole every scene he appeared in and looked like he was having the time of his life. And despite the short screen time, his performance was sufficiently memorable that when the DVD box set was released, that's Patrick Stewart right there on the cover, right alongside two of the more major stars, John Hurt and Derek Jacobi. Yes, yes, I know. Star Trek. We're getting there. Now, unlike his famous head, Stewart's road to Star Trek stardom was anything but smooth. When he was first offered a role in The Next Generation, he was actually supposed to play the android Data. However, the producer saw something in his commanding presence and his powerful voice and thought that he would make an excellent captain. 
Now this was at odds with Gene Roddenberry's vision and his desire for another hyper-masculine, man-of-action lady killer like Captain Kirk. Nevertheless, he was persuaded to call Stuart back and allowed him the opportunity to read for the role of Jean-Luc Picard. Knowing that he needed to kirk it up a bit, Stuart appeared for the audition in a toupee, which apparently looked rather awful. So he read again Au Naturel, and the rest is history. There are a number of well-known anecdotes about Patrick Stewart's head, about how the advanced future utopia depicted in Star Trek apparently couldn't cure baldness, and about how the advanced future utopia of Star Trek wouldn't care, etc, etc. But do you know the real story behind Patrick Stewart's distinctive look? His hair loss was the result of an inherited genetic condition called alopecia areata, and he had actually lost most of his hair by the time he was 18 years old. You might think that sucks, but it certainly didn't slow him down, and he has been considered a sex symbol throughout his lengthy career. In the original Star Trek series, the Command Division wore gold, ship services such as engineering, security, and communications wore red, and sciences wore blue. The red and gold uniforms were noticeably switched in the next generation, and although the change was mentioned once or twice on screen, no actual explanation was ever given. In fact, there is no canon, in-universe reason for the change. It was actually due to something far more mundane, Patrick Stewart's complexion. In early screen tests, the producers decided that he looked better in red than in gold, so an executive decision was made to put him in the more distinctive, dignified, dark red uniform, and so the entire look of the show, as well as of the shows and the movies that followed, were altered forever. Now, if you're curious about what the Next Generation cast might have looked like if they had kept the original color scheme, well, the Star Trek fan community has not let you down. User Skywalker on the Trek BBS made this impressive color swap, showing how the cast of the Next Generation would have looked with the color scheme of the original series, although they transferred data to the Science Division for some reason. It doesn't look bad at all, but it doesn't look quite right either, does it? If you're not into Star Trek, although you should be, then you probably know Patrick Stewart better from his performance as Charles Xavier in the X-Men movies. Fans all over have agreed that he was their dream choice for this role, but how did such a perfect casting come to be? Well, actually there was a lot of behind-the-scenes manipulation as it turns out. He was never a comic book reader, so he was never even really aware of the X-Men or of their founder until sometime in the late 90s when he saw an X-Men comic book that had been left in the waiting room of a film producer's office, and his first question was, why am I in the cover of a comic book? It turns out that comic had actually been strategically placed there strictly in order to stir up his interest in the character and in the upcoming film. However, he was reluctant to get attached to another big film franchise because of an unfortunate casting experience he had recently had, in which a film producer had told him that, you know, despite all of his other qualifications, he didn't want Captain Picard starring in his movie. Nevertheless, when Stewart met with X-Men director Brian Singer, he was persuaded to take on the role. And there was much rejoicing. A starring role in Star Trek for seven seasons and four films, plus appearances in seven X-Men films, is already more than respectable geek cred. But Patrick Stewart actually has some serious sci-fi acting chops going all the way back to the early 1980s. We've already mentioned Excalibur. Not exactly sci-fi, but as medieval fantasy, it's at least sci-fi adjacent. But prior to Star Trek The Next Generation, he also appeared in 1984's Doom as resident badass Gurney Halleck, and as Dr. Armstrong in 1985's mostly forgettable Life Force. Now, come on, they can't all be winners. There has been a lot of speculation about why such a dignified and respected actor would accept the role of Poop in the Emoji Movie. Meet Poop. It's showtime. Just doing my duty. <laughs> what? He did a number of interviews where he was asked this very question, especially since the Emoji Movie came out so close to Logan, where Patrick Stewart gave what was considered by many to be an Oscar-worthy performance. 
However, he never really gave a serious, straightforward answer to the question. He joked about poop being the role of a lifetime, how it was the role he was born to play, and how critics throughout his career had described his acting as shitty anyway, so now he was going to show them what shitty acting really was. And even though he never really answered the question, the way in which he did not answer the question was in itself the answer to the question. Namely, that he has a sense of humor and he thought the role would be fun. Unfortunately, it turned out to be more fun for him than it was for the audience. Yes, you read that right. Sir Ian McKellen married Sir Patrick Stewart. To his wife, Sonny Ozell. No! I wanted to do the joke! Sorry, sorry! Yes, by that misleading statement, what I meant to say was that Ian McKellen got himself ordained so that he could perform the wedding ceremony in September of 2013. The two have been friends for a very long time, and even though they make a frankly adorable couple, it's just not in the stars for these stars. Today is a big day in the sci-fi multiverse for more than one reason. By an odd coincidence, today is also the birthday of another major sci-fi icon, the one and only Harrison Ford, who turned 76 today. I won't spend a lot of time on that right now because this video is long enough as it is, but maybe I'll just devote next July 13th to Harrison Han Indiana Rick Decker Jones Solo Ford. I just had to mention it because seriously, what are the odds? It's approximately 3,720 to 1! Never tell me the odds! Well, there you have it. Some interesting facts about an interesting man. How many of these did you know already? I feel like such an idiot. Quite right, so you should. If you have any additional stories that you think are interesting, go ahead and tell us about it in the comments. As always, hitting the like button is appreciated, and hitting the subscribe button really does go a long way to keeping this channel afloat so that I can continue to bring you debatably educational content, so please do me a solid and subscribe. Sir Patrick, is there anything you'd like to add? It's very important to thoroughly wring out your sponges after every usage. This will prevent the accumulation of grime and bacteria. Uh huh. Anything else? Thank you for coming. You've been wonderful. Okay, that was better. Thanks. We'll see you next time.